What is going on YouTube? It is Primitive here and today I'm going to be bringing you my Imperial list that I've been posting on the channel the past week or so. I've been playing a bunch with Imperial because this is a deck that I really wanted to learn and I've been testing out all the lists I've seen online but I made some changes myself because I found some cards in testing that I felt weren't really carrying their weight and I built this list which feels a little bit better for me uh, especially against Lord Nightmon. This deck feels like it has a really good uh, matchup versus Lord Nightmon and I've had a lot of people request this list come onto the channel the past week and so I decided I'd bring it to you because I do feel comfortable with this list being being really good there may be one or two changes that we can talk about but for the most part this list feels very solid and very good and you can play this list at any of your tournaments and perform very well so getting on into it we're going to have the digitama we just have four demi vimon there's no reason to play a fifth egg here because you are almost never going to go to your fifth egg i have had one or two games where if i had a fifth egg that would have been really nice because uh you would able to get another free digimon out um through raising but the thing is, is if you play like Upamon, for example, you have the opportunity to miss the draw as to where with Demi Vimon, you have so many cards that let you draw all of your ultimates, your Imperial, even the Vimon, all let you draw. So the consistency of this card is absolutely insane. So you want to just only be digivolving on top of this card. The upside of always having this card completely outweighs the downside of not having a fifth egg. So uh, four Demi Vimon for sure. Then getting into the rookies, we're going to have four Vmon here. The jamming Vmon is extremely powerful in this list because one, it pairs with Demi Vmon early, which gives you nice early draws, but also being able to swing safely with jamming um, early is very, very powerful because with Imperial Dramon, you want to be able to finish with Imperial Swings into Omnimon or maybe Lobomon or something. And so getting these early checks makes the late game so much easier. If you're able to get one or two checks here, and then you're able to do something like swing with Pyeldramon, Digivolve into Imperial, get your two swings, and then clear security and then go into Omnimon. Mon, you have game right there so the vmon is very important not only for draws but also for the uh, early game checks yeah this card's going to get swung over when you swing in because it's only 2k dp but being able to get a check in to help your imperial win the game later is extremely important next up we're going to have two elecmon and two gomamon now these cards are essentially the same they're two drop zero to digivolve three k's but they do have different names which means that this does play around bt1 omnimon now obviously bt1 omnimon isn't the most common occurrence that can happen right now and come to delete all your level twos but the thing is is it's around enough to where when these cards don't do anything different putting two and two does play around omnimon a little bit and just having that little security um is nice because it doesn't change anything about the deck Next, we're going to have two of the Unsuspend Vimon. Now, this is probably the rookie that I think is the least impactful. Um, I've considered going down to one or zero of this card because, yes, you get Inheritable when you Unsuspend um, on your main phase. But the thing is, is you get so much draw with this deck that getting an extra draw when you unsuspend with imperial isn't the most impactful and really has been kind of lackluster i found this just to be a level three that could be something else a little bit better it could be another two drops so you could have rookie rush you could play something like strabimon to search um but i've been playing the vmon right now this is the main card that's in the list right now that i'm not 100 percent about is this vmon i'm not 100 percent sold on it so um like i said i will likely go to one or uh, zero of these in favor of at least putting in another Gabumon. I'm playing two of the draw Gabumon. This card's absolutely amazing. Um, the consistency of this card, I love it. Just being able to play it and draw, I love this card so much. It really only feels bad versus Lord Nightmon because they have the Pikmons to um, bump it, which is why I've been playing two because I wanted to prioritize doing well versus Lord Nightmon. So playing three when it can get hit by Pikmon is a little bit rough, which is where I came in with this Vmon. But uh, like I said, I do think that Gabumon is a little bit better, and there's probably other things like Strabimon that are a little bit better than the Vimon, um, but it is just a draw card, it's consistency, and consistency with this list is what you're going to need, so as you can see, there's a lot of draw in this deck, so the Vimon fits the synergy, but I'm just going to let you know that if you feel like you don't like the Vimon, that is also how I feel, and I am considering changing it, it's just the Blues don't have the most impactful uh, level 3s. And then we're going to finish off the rookies with the Siakomon. This is just really good, especially in the mirror, but it's also good versus green and purple. This is just a card that you really want to play. Um, it helps it in so many matchups. And then I've played multiple mirror matches, and playing Siakomon versus your opponent is something that they're going to hate because it's pretty much impossible for them to get over this. They don't have removal besides Kakaitis Breath. So um, this is just going to sit there, and you can leave it unsuspended and just keep it chilling. And they're all not only going to be able to devolve their Imperial for five, so... Um, Siakamon's very powerful. It's also good in other matchups, so I like it as a pseudo-tech, I guess. 
Then we got two Grizzlymon and two Celamon. I like the blockers. I was playing four and one here, but I found that the uh, 6k DP was extremely important versus things like Nidhogg and uh, Shoutmon DX. So I wanted to bump up from two to three. Celamon's a little bit better because it is the one to Digivolve. So it helps you get up to your Imperial Jamon faster if that's the game plan that you want. But uh, sometimes you do need blockers and the Grizzlymon's a little bit better. I, I like the one to Digivolve here and I like the 6k um, DP here. So I found two to three be better. The one to Digivolve is usually a little more impactful. So three, uh, so this one is a little more important than this one, but I like the two because it does have multiple matchups that it's good against. And also having the two to Digivolve blocker can help if your opponent puts you at one, for example. Then we're going to have three Lobomon. Now, I've considered cutting down to two Lobomon because I play three Tamers, and uh, with this list, you don't Lobomon for game as much because you have multiple swings with Imperial and Omnimon to usually end the game, but there are Lobomon's one of those things where you can just win with Lobomon at all times, so I decided to go with three for consistency, although two feels like what would be best in my mind because you could play another champion in this slot. I think three for consistency is going to be the best because uh, Lobomon's just Lobomon. You're going to get that your opponent's going to play and just hope that you don't have Lobomon and then you put Lobomon on top of Davis and swing for game. So the consistency of that is really good. So um, I've gone up to three. Like I said, I've considered two, but I think I've decided on three being best. And then we're going to have one Gorillamon and Tobiumon. These are just one to Digivolves. I think Tobiumon is probably the worst card in the deck that people play. Um, I decided to play one, though, because there are some situations where playing a level 3 uh, champion instead of a level 3 rookie is going to be better, so that way you can Digivolve an ultimate on top of it. But from what I found is that Tobiumon is easily probably the worst card in the deck. Um, in my opinion, I find this card to be bad most of the time and good some of the time, but when it's good, it's really, really good. So I decided to just play one. And then the Gorillamons are just one to Digivolve. They aren't as impactful as the Celamon, so you don't want to play as many. Just having this to be able to Digivolve in Raising and then Digivolve a um, Ultimate on top of it. As to where Celamon, you want to Digivolve and then Promote so you can have a blocker on board. Gorillamon, you just Digivolve over. And then the same thing with to Tobiu. It is a one to Digivolve that you can Digivolve in Raising or whatever. But for the most part, I think this card's not as good. Uh, most people play two or three of Tobiumon. I think one maximum is correct. It's just a card that if you don't have the cards that are going to go well with it when you play this, it's just pretty bad. And then... Four Pyildramon and four Dino Beamon. Not really anything to explain here. This is the standard ultimate lineup. There's nothing you can really change here. This makes it so you can go into your Imperials. Um, you can Digivolve them for cheaper. And playing another ultimate would just lower the consistency of it. And there's not very many other ultimates that really fit with um, all four. So or with Imperial, sorry. So four and four here. It's pretty standard. Then getting into the Megas, we have the four Imperial, it's our boss monster. Um, you want four for maximum consistency, and it's just an amazing card. The whole deck is based around it and synergizes with it, so you have to play four here. And then we're going to have one Boncho and one Nidhogg. So I saw a lot of people playing two Nidhoggs here, and I tested that a bit. And I do like seeing two Nidhoggs, but I wanted to test the Boncho when I thought about it um, as the second green because they do have different things. Of course, Nidhogg, you can Digiburst and get a board clear, which is very nice. As for with Boncho Stingmon, you clear one thing that's very tall while getting extreme offensive pressure, being able to do three security checks with Boncho Stingmon. Now, um, a lot of people said that they like Nidhogg versus Boncho Stingmon. I'm still not 100% sold. This is the last card in the list that I'm not 100% sure about is the Boncho Stingmon or if it should be a second Nidhogg because I do feel the two green Megas are good but they just do things that are completely different. I've had games where Boncho Stingmon's three security checks into Lobomon have been the game winner and um been super super impactful and would have been a million times better than Nidhogg would have been and there's also times where Nidhogg uh, is way better than Boncho Stingmon will be so it's kind of a thing where they are synergistic uh, together as they do different things, but they're also kind of contradictory to each other because sometimes you want this one when you don't have it and you want this one when you don't have it. So uh, I'm not 100% sure on which one I want to go, if I want to go one and one or if I want to go two Nidhogs. But like I said, this is the last card that I'm not 100% sh sure about is the Boncho. But as you've seen from my matches, it's been extremely powerful for me. It's just one of those things where it's only good sometimes as where Nidhogg is good almost always. Um, so that's going to be your decision. I'm going to keep playing the Boncho for now until I decide that... Uh, I don't think it's too good because as of right now, it's still good enough to be a tech. And then two Omnimon for the level sevens. This is just pretty standard. Um, I don't play three because with three, you're going to have way too much clunkiness of the Omnimons. With two, you're going to make it so you see the consistency that you want. If you have one, you're not going to see it consistent enough. And if it's in... Uh, security or you play davis and it goes to the bottom then you're, you're out of luck playing two gives you the consistency um while not 
clunking it. You only have four Digimon that you can go on top of this, being the Imperials. So unlike other lists where you may play like Valder Arm and you have six to seven yellow tame, uh, Digimon that you can go on top of, this Omnimon can only go on top of the um, Imperials. So two to the four Imperials is a little bit of a weird ratio. But like I said, if you only play one, it's not going to be consistent enough. And there's going to be a lot more times where you just don't get to play it because it's in security or you put it to the, your bottom of the deck. So... Uh, two is just going to up the consistency and make it so you have your game ender. Then we're going to have three Davis. Again, something pretty standard. Not much to say here. I think three Tamers here is good enough in this list. I don't think you need to play four. Yeah, if you play multiple Davises out, they are pretty good because you get to search and then you can Lobo on top of one for a cycle while still having your uh, memory Tamers. But I think three is consistent enough. If you have four, it might be a little too clunky. At three, I still sometimes feel like I see a little too many Davises in my hand, but I can't cut it down to two because I feel like if I cut it down to two, then you're not going to see it enough. So I've just decided that three is the magic number for Davis with this deck for me. And um, yeah, I see it actually pretty consistently. Then we have four Hammer Spark. Again, nothing really to say here too much. It's Hammer Spark. It gains you a memory, so it's really good with curves. It's really good with making dynamic plays. And it has the most insane security effect in the deck of being able to gain two memory and essentially just either shortening your opponent's turn or just ending their turn completely, which is very helpful, especially if you have Davis out. Because if your opponent's at like one memory and they swing hit Hammer Spark, it'll go to one on your turn and then you'll go to three with Davis. So Hammer Spark, you got to play four of, in my opinion, because it's such a good card. You want to see it in security. You want to see it when you're playing the game. And so if I could play more Hammer Spark, I would but unfortunately due to game rules i can only play four and then to finish off the deck we're gonna play two kakaitis breath now this card was a card that i was not sold on at all i actually thought this card was terrible uh, when i first started playing it and now at this point i will say that this card is pretty much staple in my opinion you could potentially play absolute blast in this spot but uh, I think Kakaitis Breath is a little bit better because Kakaitis Breath, you can bounce anything as to where the uh, Blast, you're going to have to have something that doesn't have sources underneath it. So the Kakaitis Breath has been really good. It's really good in security and just being able to, if your opponent just has one big Mega on board and being able to bounce it back to their hand, it's going to shut them down. So I like two Kakaitis Breath. I wouldn't play any more because it would get really bricky. And one of my friends is playing one Kakaitis Breath in his list and he told me that he thinks two is best and that one is bad. So I've been playing two. Even my friend uh, agrees that two is good so i like two here of course you can play absolute blast if you prefer that but i do think the kakaitis breath is a little bit better even though it costs one more memory the uh, unrestrictedness of who you can bounce is just a little too good but with that being said that is my imperial list i will be having more games with this because i am trying to learn this list um for the rest of bt5 i'll still play other decks but i think this is going to be my main deck for the rest of bt5 instead of lord nightmon because i want to go ahead and learn a different style of decks so with that being said i hope you enjoyed this list let me know down below if there's any changes that you would make or anything you liked or disliked but with that being said i hope you have a great day and peace out